welcome <clears throat> to episode one of my Salem tutorial series. This first episode is just an introduction to the fantastic game that is Salem. I will lay out this series just like my worm series as an index that you can jump to um, to different episodes depending on what it is you want to learn about. I will try to cover every subject again just like my worm series. In this episode I will try to explain a little about Salem as in what type of game it is and what you can do in it. <coughs> So, as you can see, it's an overhead perspective game, so isometric. Um, you can zoom in and out, as you can see, and it does go quite far out as well, so you can see right around your area. Um, but let's zoom in, because I don't want to cause your vision problems. So, <clears throat> continuing on, sorry, apologise for my coughing. Please remember, this is just my opinion. I am honestly addicted to playing this game, so this series will be biased. However, I shall not shy away from telling you about the negatives. My job is to tell you how to counter them and turn them into positives. And thank you to Roman for telling me about the wonderful Salem. I can never thank you enough for that. OK, let's start with the fact that Salem tries its best to put you off wanting to play. For example, when I started playing, I noticed that I'd got a headache after 20 minutes into the game. The reason for this, it is a deep, deep game with as much content as Worm, I believe. The answers on how to do things are vague and working out how to do some things can be daunting to say the least. There is a wiki which I will put in the description along with the Salem website but it does not always tell you all you need to know. So as you can see this game is a perfect candidate for the gamester to reveal all its wonderful secrets of which there are far too many to even think about listing. Instead I will simply show you the delights in many future episodes that I do. <clears throat> Salem is a crafting MMO. It is being developed by the company Mortal Moments. It has permadeath and it has PvP, player versus player. But don't let that worry you, as the gamester has your back. It has crimes and punishments. If someone robs you and you have a claim, they can be brought to justice, whether that's by you summing, summoning them and killing them, or by other means. What is a claim, I hear you ask? It is a plot of land you can buy by using a writ that you can buy from the town. You can place it anywhere outside of the town of Providence. What is Providence, I hear you ask? That, my friends, is another episode, but it will be a good one. The land that you place a claim on is then yours to use and abuse with, what, what, with whatever crafts your heart desires to follow. Let's show you some of the things that will be in future episodes. But first let's tell you about some of the crafts that you can find in Salem. And actually, just before that, let's just show you. Over there, you see that? That grey tall stone obelisk pillar? That is a token, by the way. And that denotes your area. You can increase the size and lower the size. Uh, just very similar in fact to Worm um, and increasing the token size in, in Worm. It works exactly the same. But I'll get to that in another episode. And it'll be a good one. So anyway, to tell you about some of the crafts in Salem. Okay. These are, o are only the crafts I have learned so far. There are many, many more but these are the crafts that I'm aware of. There is farming, as you can see around me, different types of crops, which I'll do an episode on in the future. 
There's beekeeping, turkey farming, butterfly farming, mining, smelting, baking, coaling, kiln, pottery, blacksmithing, alchemy, potion making, tailoring, fishing, building vehicles, becoming a merchant, which is a lot of fun, I'll tell you, cooking, forestry, gardening, masonry, whittling, carpentry, gem cutting, panning, skinning, tanning, well, you get the picture. This is a big game. Okay, so going over all them skills, you will create with, for some of them, you'll start creating different types of tools. Whether that's tools that you will carry in your inventory, um, you, do, you can make different types of tool belts where you can put your tools. Uh, so different skills have different tools, um, but they also have different structures, structures, some of the skills. Like, for example, um, this is a grindstone, which we'll be using in a future episode, um, used for many different types of uses. Over here, we have a press, which we can use for press pressing different items in and turning them into oils. Over here, you can see I have a farmer's house. You can build different types of houses. The first house you can build is a pilgrim's house. But again, I will have an episode on houses. Over here you can see there's a baking house. A bakery over here. That voice you just heard, by the way, this is how good this game is. It even lets you go mad. Because in this game it has insanity. Because back in the 1600s, when the pilgrims, because I am a pilgrim, that's what you will be if you play Salem. It's It starts in the New World when the pilgrims were first settling. And of course, lots of them were well known to go crazy. Because being in the wilds on their own and having to do a lot of what they had to do, would be enough to drive any normal person mad. Anyway, this allows us to go mad eventually. I have killed one of my characters off already by licking boards, but we'll get into that in another episode. Anyway, so over here's my baker, baker's oven if you like. Again, we'll get into baking in a later episode. This is just showing you some of the structures and some of the items that you can do and make. Over here we have a mine entrance to to go mining in order to get different ores, you have to build an entrance. We'll get cover that in a mining episode. Over here you can see there's a carpentry bench. Over here you can see there's a whittling bench. These are all different skills for making different items. Over here we have a sawbuck. Again for cutting down trees, putting the tree on and making planks. We'll get to all of that in a future episode. Over here's the kiln. With the kiln you can make different types of containers. There are many types of different containers. The first containers we'll be making are simple reed ones. Over here here you can see this is how one way that you can make hay. Over here you've got compost bins which you can use for your fields to grow them with different fertilizers. Over here we've got a smeltery for smelting the ores. Over here we've got a tanning barrel which we can tan with and create um, leather. Over here we've got a bee skep it's called which is a beehive. Uh, for creating beeswax and honey. Uh, here we have a baking table, which is a totally different skill to the baking oven, because this one you roll dough. Over here we've got some drying racks. There's all different types of items you can dry on the racks. We'll be covering them all. Over here we've got our turkey, um, turkey coops. So that's where we br I'm breeding the turkeys. Uh, carrying on down here, you can see some of my crops have uh, bloomed uh, or grown to fall so they're ripe. Over here you can see that we get onto fishing. There's different types of fishing. So anyway, that's, that's just a quick run through of some of the skills. I do seriously stress, okay, that I am slowly learning the later stages of the game or mid game so I've not learned all of the skills yet oh there's a loom for, for tailoring I mean there is loads and loads of skills in this game over here you can see there's an oiling 
trough. Um, you can make uh, clay troughs, all sorts. Anyway, going back, carrying on. It, I think you get the picture that this is a big, big game. Salem is free to play. It does have a cash store, but I have never used it, as I wanted to demonstrate how much fun you can have playing without any cost. Maybe I will do an episode on it in the future, if I feel there is a need, or if any of you watching ask for an episode on the cash store. Although I would prefer a uh, to stay away from it because I want to show you the joy that you can have playing Salem if you really love the game then by all means show your support by going to the store they do have some nice items uh, that I mentioned on their website but I've never actually been to the store okay Salem is currently in Steam's green light area it just needs support to bloom into one of the best games around if you enjoy playing Salem please stop by the Steam area and vote for Salem it is another game that has a small following but is content rich Salem Cat came out of beta in February 2012 so yes there is a lot of content in this game updates are frequent they are continually adding and fixing things within the game and generally making the game better and better. The way you learn new crafts is through proficiencies. Proficiencies you can see as skills. So if I bring up the proficiencies window, these are all the proficiencies. I'm not going to go into it now, okay? But suffice to say, see the proficiencies as the different types of skills that you can learn. As your proficiencies get higher, you gain extra benefits. So if I hover over one, you'll see there it tells you increasing this skill will increase the number of, um, give you different benefits you will get from it. So there we go with that. But proficiencies will be explained fully in another episode. To learn proficiencies, you must have inspiration. Here's inspiration down here. See inspiration as experience. If this was another type of game, it would be called experience. But you will find very fast in Salem, nothing is as it is normally called because it it is a beautifully made game and what they've done is they've put a totally different spin on everything so anyway there's inspiration again I will do an episode just on that and how you can increase it through inspiration is obviously how you can increase your skills and learn and open up new crafting rep trees and structures and recipes and all sorts of items you can gain inspiration through doing tasks like chopping trees or making inspirationals. Like I say, that will be another episode. You also have what are called humours, which are up here, these four coloured bars. You can see you have a blue bar. Think of the blue bar as endurance. The red bar, see as life. The yellow bar, see as strength. And the black bar, see as mind power. Again. This will be another episode all on its own. You may be thinking, well, why does that need an episode all on its own? Trust me, it does. Okay, continuing on. The population in Salem can be hostile. I have been robbed because I had no claim token. And also, one person did decided to destroy all my stuff. I think because they did not like me settling in the same area as them. Again, this was because I did not have a claim token. You can protect your claim with towers that will attack trespassers, thieves, people who damage your walls and stuff, and generally any undesirables, which counts for most of the people I have met so far in the game. But there are ways to counter them. Don't get me wrong, this is just like any other online game. You've got nice people and people that are not so nice. Maybe they're just role-playing because it's a PvP game and they're role-playing someone who's being nasty. 
Do not let it put, put you off the fact that it's PvP. See it as a challenge. I've been playing this now for over a month and I've not been attacked by anyone. Not a single player. Why? Two reasons. One, it's a massive world. Two, there's hardly anyone playing it. But the people tend to just... Um, they tend to just do things to aggravate you or not even aggravate you they just like will walk off with all your stuff if you don't nail it down or protect it with a claim anyway that's all right because we can build walls we can build fortifications and of course we can claim the land to make sure that it's protected when you have a claim though be aware that people can still come onto your claim and they can still steal stuff but then what they're doing is committing crimes and you can summon someone and kill them if they've committed crimes against you when someone commits a crime I'll leave it there because that's another episode in the future it's a big subject to cover is crime and punishment so just to let you know though okay you can protect your land but people can still go on to it not that anyone has with my land and I haven't even got a wall up yet as you can see anyway so carrying on Salem is a very fun game to play but it is also a challenge with many obstacles in your path but with time you will grow stronger it starts off slow with only a few skills to use but eventually you will have 10 tons that you can do there is no limit to the amount of skills you can learn it just takes time which can be sped up with the right potions that you can make I will start the first tutorial episode at the Salem Tu starting starting tutorial which is where you first log into the game as even this needs a bit of gamesters love to get you through I will then progress my avatar through the series and show you a clear path to progression with as much fun as you can possibly tol tolerate along the way and uh, and also of course with as much waffling okay I will leave the introduction episode here Take care pilgrims and see you in the tutorial episodes. I hope you all enjoy this new series and you'll, you will see, just like I say, Salem is a very, very fun game to play. But do not take it lightly. It is a game that will reward you, but only after punishing you, just like Worm. It will teach you respect. Wherever you are in the world, God bless you and keep every last one of you safe. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic day. Goodbye.